Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing a little bit of an unboxing or an un packaging, I guess. Um, this package is from Miss Eve Bolt. I'll go ahead and put a link to her channel right up here for you. We went ahead and did a little supply swap. I sent her some of my Da Vinci paints and she sent me some of her handmade paints. And guessing by the weight of this package, there's probably a couple other things in here as well. Uh, Cricket is not allowed at my art desk, but she is in fact sitting right here. Uh, she's been like really obsessed with this package since I got it, so it must smell extra good from uh, Canada. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started opening this up. I think I do remember what this larger box is, so we'll see if I remembered correctly <laughs> when we open that up. She sent this really cute little note with some cute little kitties on the borders, and she wanted to make sure I gave Cricket a hug, so I can promise you, in my lap right now, even though she's not supposed to be hug-given. And she also sent, if you follow her on Instagram, I've seen all of her little cute bird paintings that she's been doing, but now I get to have one. Thank you, Eve. Can sit up on my wall with my other uh, YouTube collaboration slash artist alley stuff. It's a vermilion flycatcher. She even wrote the name on the back. It looks like here she has her swatches for her handmade paints that she sent me. Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. I cannot wait to open these up. They're such unique colors for watercolor. I'm really excited to try them out. We'll set this off to the side. I believe those paints are in this box here with little washi tape. Little kitty that looks a little bit like Cricket. I don't know what Cricket would do with an open flame. Don't know that I really want to try anything out. She'd probably be afraid of it though. And now there's a little silica packet in here so that they stay nice and dry. It's a nice little touch. Oh my goodness. This is my favorite color from her. I already have a pan, but she sent me another one. Spanish gold ochre, thank you, Eve. And then we've got some really cool specialty colors in here. There's a mint and a coral. And then we've got green gold and chromium oxide. I actually don't have any chromium oxide. I know it's an opaque color, but I'm excited to try it out. What I've been doing with a lot of my opaque colors that I have um, from other brands, like the ones that are really, really thick and concentrated and don't necessarily dilute down really well, is I've been using them in conjunction with my gouache, actually. And then it looks like we also have a, a light ochre and a French light ochre, which are very different colors, so I'll get to try those out as well. These, as I uh, was previously mentioning, um, I believe are a set of the Shinhan Pass Gouache uh, hybrid sets, like watercolor hybrid sets. Oh, that's adorable. Little mermaid kitty. Is this something you did, Eve, or did you pick it up somewhere? It's really cute. Um, Eve said that she had a couple extra pass colors, and I've heard a little bit about these on YouTube, but I haven't seen too many resources, so I was really excited to go ahead and try these out. I haven't been able to afford on a larger set, but there are six tubes in here, and it looks like they're a little bit bigger than a typical watercolor tube. Um, this brand of paint is a hybrid of watercolor and gouache, as I mentioned, and you're supposed to be able to use them pretty seamlessly between the two mediums. Oh, I love this set. It doesn't have black or white in it, um, which is actually a little unique for a gouache set not to have white in it, so I'll have to buy some more. Um, I'm probably running out of my other white gouache as well, but we've got um, a yellow, red, blue for our primaries, and there's a green, a purple, and a burnt sienna. So super excited. Thank you so much, E, for sending these. I cannot wait to dive in and try them out. Let's go ahead and get these open so we can try them out. She has gone ahead and hand uh, written all these little labels that she has on her paints. Uh, she has, I assume this is her catalog number. They're labeled with different uh, smaller numbers. And then we've got the pigment number on the other side. So this is made with PY43, uh, which is the same as yellow ochre. 
I hate to tear these little handmade labels. They're so cute. If you're interested, Eve has an Etsy shop where she does sell her handmade paints. I'll go ahead and put a link to that in the description for you. Here is her little pan here. She's even handwritten all of the information on the bottom in case they get separated. And she has this really cute little pinstriped craft paper on all of them. So as I mentioned before, I had a couple of her colors from previously when we did our collaboration video together. If you want to go ahead and check out that video, I'll put a link up here for you. Uh, the colors that I had from before were the Spanish Gold Ochre, which I have a new one here. I have the Salmon, and I also have a Prussian Blue. So I thought I'd add the two new colors to this lineup. I'll swatch them all out, and you can go ahead and see some of her beautiful handmade paints. All right, I have a scrap piece of arches here that I thought we could use to go ahead and take a look at these paints. It is a little bit wavy since it is a scrap piece of paper. I think I'm going to tape down the edges of it. And I think I will also put down a line for opacity. So it always interests me so much how a different, like a single pigment can make so many different hues of a color. Um, this is made from the same pigment of yellow ochre, but it's such a light, um, such a light version of this color that I have not seen really before. It reminds me a little bit of Buff Titanium from Daniel Smith, which is really popular, but I already like this version more. I feel like it has uh, less granulation and less opacity to it than the Buff Titanium does, and Given that I like transparent colors so much, I think this is a really nice, soft, natural color for if you were doing sand or something like that. Next up we have the Light Ochre, which is another version of PY43. This is the typical yellow ochre kind of variety of um, this pigment. Like ye other yellow ochres, it is pretty uh, opaque. But I suspect when we um, dilute this a bit, because it came off very full strength, that we will have a much more transparent pigment. And that is, in fact, true. Over here, you can see that it's pretty transparent. Let me zoom in for you so you can see a little bit better. Next up, we have this beautiful Spanish ochre, which is PY42. This is a much more golden version of this ochre that I have not seen any manufacturer produce that I would love it if it were on the whole, but until then, Eve will have, have my support of this color for certain. It is a bit opaque, but for that golden color, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Here is her salmon from her kind of really early Early days of Moline paint. I love this color and I love the oranges that it makes with the Spanish Gold Ochre. If I remember correctly, this color goes on really thickly and opaquely, but when it dries, it's not as opaque and you can see more of the, um, the black line underneath. So we'll see if I remembered that properly. After it's had time to dry, I don't know if I'm pacing myself right on this line. I might run out of space. This coral color is a really pretty, like, soft baby pink. It has a white in it, so I would fully expect that it has um, some opacity to it. But these colors are just inspiring me to want to do a series of painting using them. I just love the hues of them so much even though they're pretty far out of my comfort zone for what I'm used to. They just make me want to know more about them. This is mint. 
It was made with two different shades of white and um, PG7, which is thalo green. Which is interesting because it's a very blue tone. Oh my gosh, you guys. These are so beautiful. They're so creamy also. So Eve, fantastic job on fine-tuning your recipes. If you haven't uh, seen a video with me talking about my envy for those who <laughs> hand mold their paints, um, I absolutely love this process and I would totally, totally do it myself except for the fact that I've got my really bad ribs and my bad shoulder and neck. So the idea of mulling and the physicality that that uh, entails would probably be fairly impossible for me to do without injuring myself. So I just have to live vicariously through the other artists who do mull their own paints beautifully. I remember I even made like a, a wish list on a couple different pigment sites of the the pigment colors that I wanted to turn into a palette. And maybe that's why I'm gravitating so heavily to these colors. I think both of those colors were in this palette that I really wanted to make a little uh, lovely earth, earthy, shabby chic set of paints. I don't know how else to describe it. They were all really soft colors. Here's the chromium oxide green. And I believe this is one of the most opaque pigments that there is. I don't think they come more opaque than this in watercolor. I know that Lindsay, the frugal crafter, does not like this pigment at all. I have uh, no real experience with it, so I can't say for certain. I think it does tend to polarize people's opinions on it because it is so thick. I like the hue of it though. I think the tone of it is really pretty. I think this definitely could have a place on my gouache palette. I'm not saying that this is gouache, I just, with the opacity of it, I think it would make a nice complement to that palette. And finally, we've got this green gold, which is a color that's fairly new for me. I'm trying to play with it more and more. I've got a couple samples, I believe, from Daniel Smith and from Core, and uh, I'm trying to work with them a little bit more because I know that it's a very useful color for mixing. I always just thought on its own that it was kind of a bleh color, but when you start mixing it with other pigments, it just makes some of the most beautiful tones that I've seen in that you know, natural palette range. All right, so I've let these kind of naturally dry here. I didn't rush them with the heat tool or anything. Let me go ahead and lift them up and show you what they look like. Alright everyone, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video with a little illustration that I made for these paints. I apologize at the very, very beginning got cut off, but all I did was put a light wash of the light ochre on Winnie the Pooh there and a layer of the salmon on his honey pot. Now I tried several different paintings to try out these paints and I couldn't come up with an original idea that I was really happy with to showcase these really unique colors. And then I realized that one of the reasons that I love them so much, um, in addition to the, what I was talking about earlier with wanting to mold my own paints, is that uh, these colors actually remind me so much of the old Winnie the Pooh illustrations. Now my grandmother used to read us stories out of the complete tales of Winnie the Pooh when we were younger and stayed with her at her house. And so these have a, an incredibly special place in my heart. And after she passed away, I bought my own copy of the complete tales so that I would have them someday to share with my children, hopefully. And um, I just was really inspired by these beautiful light colors to go ahead and paint an illustration of Winnie the Pooh and Piglet from those original stories. These colors really lent themselves well to this painting and I didn't really want for anything that I didn't have. I had those beautiful golden colors for Winnie the Pooh himself. The salmon that I had from her first run was the perfect color for his honey pot. And in the original stories, Piglet, um, aside from being this really light pink cute, 
wore a little green jumper in the stories instead of the more popular pink version that he is known for nowadays. So I was even able to use some of that chrome oxide green, which I apologize during my recording, I kept saying chromium oxide green, which is a little bit incorrect. I absolutely love the way that these two greens that she sent me mix together to make this beautiful mid-tone green. The green gold really shines through and makes the paint glow, while the chrome oxide green gives it this beautiful body and texture. I finished off the painting using the mint color for the sky, which really reminded me of the illustrations in the stories, and all in all, I really had fun with this little illustration piece. So I hope that you enjoyed taking a look at these handmade watercolors from Eve today. I really love them. I can't wait to practice more and do more illustrations with them. I would definitely encourage you to check out her shop if you like handmade watercolors. If you've seen my other videos on handmade watercolors, they're of course a little bit different than what you will get from a large manufacturer, but they have so much beauty and character to them that I really enjoy working with them when I have a chance. So. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked the content. Uh, comment below and let me know what your favorite story was growing up and if you've ever done illustrations from those storybooks or whatever, consider doing so. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.